Okay, David Robinson is a 31 year old New Jersey native who currently resides in Michigan. He has four plus years of political experience holding a variety of positions on campaigns, both on the federal and local levels. His most recent roles include, but are not limited to campaign manager for Donald Eason for Congress, campaign coordinator for Gina Johnson for state representative, political director for delegate Chris Jones's reelection campaign and regional director for the 2018 John James for Senate campaign. In addition to his career in politics, David also serves on the Right to Life of Michigan Black Leadership Committee, helping to bring awareness to Black communities about the detriment of abortions. Welcome, David. Thanks for joining. Thank you. I don't think anyone else is on here, so I'm going to give you the first question. Um, I am. Oh, is Donald? Is Donald on? This is Donald. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I had to call in. I couldn't get on the Zoom. I apologize for that, but I am on the phone line here. Yes. Great. Okay, let me introduce you, Donald. Donald Eason was born in Southwest Detroit to a single mother. He became the first member of his family to attend college, earning two bachelor's degrees and a master's in public administration. After graduation, Donald was hired to full-time work full-time representing CH2M Hills, North America region. Six years later, Donald was recruited to serve as special assistant to the president of Hillsdale College, where he focused on their initiative to launch Barney Charter Schools. Donald credits his educational opportunities with helping him stay off the streets, climb out of poverty and build a successful life and career an opportunity he would like to afford students of inner city Detroit. Donald served his community as a pastor for 20 years with the Church of Christ and through several leadership positions. He was the chairman for the National Forum for Black Public Administrators, a board member for the YMCA in Detroit, Detroit Second Chance, and the Concerned Citizens of Southwest Detroit. Donald is husband, father, pastor, and businessman. He and his wife, Phyllis, have been married for 32 years, and they are the proud parents of three adult children. Welcome, Pastor Easton. Eason, I'm sorry. I would like to ask you if you would um, start us off with a prayer tonight. Would you mind? Certainly. Let us go to God in a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for this time that you have given us together. We thank you for this day that we have been allowed to experience unlike any other. And Father, we pray that you be with uh, the panel members, you be with continue to bless the right, the life of Michigan to uh, save uh, babies while in the womb, that they can come out and, and experience the life that you have prepared for them. And Father, we pray that you give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and as we go through our discussion tonight, may you be receive the glory and the honor for it is you that give us life. Because in your words, you said, you, uh, Jesus said, I came to give you life and to give you that more abundantly. Bless us, Father, according to your mercy, your grace, and your will. And in your Son, Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Donald. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to start with you, David, since you were here first and you look ready to go. Why, David, is it important, especially as a black person, to vote pro-life? Well, for me, it's important that first I have to know who I am, um, and I am God's creation. Um, I'm created in his image. And I think that as a black community, we have to get back to that place where, um, when it comes to the issue of abortion, and understanding that all life is created by God. Um, you know, for uh, so many times throughout history, you know, there was our, our personhood was questioned. Um, you know, if you're looking back during slavery, um, one of the main arguments was that we didn't have the personhood and that we didn't, we weren't considered human. Um, and you see that that similar argument being made um, with abortion now. Um, so to me, you know, it's all about remembering whose I am and just getting back um, and, you know, showing the rest of the black community 
um, that our life matters in and out of the womb. That is so true, thank you. Uh, Donald, can you answer the same thing? Why is it important, especially as a black person to vote pro-life? Well, thank you so much. I, I, I think it's important because one, uh, as David mentioned, I'm certainly as a member of God's kingdom, uh, God did pay to give us life, Jesus rather, and that more abundantly. And the first thing that God gave us as human beings is life. And he, when he breathed into uh, Adam's nostril, the breath of life. And so for the black community, if we just look at our community going back to when Roe v. Wade was uh, first passed or when it's passed, uh, over 20 million uh, black babies have been aborted. And certainly it's, it's reflective in our community by the numbers that we possess even today. Uh, if you go back to the 1960s, there are about 20 million Americans, over uh, 20 million African-Americans in the country, and we've aborted more babies than that population was back then. And so our percentages in terms of our population now was pretty much the same as it was 40, over 40 years ago. And the only way we can thrive as a people uh, is that we have to have life coming into our community. And if we don't have life coming into our community, it dies off. And even as uh, American citizens, we are only as strong as our weakest link. And if we abort our babies, then we become weaker as a nation. So it's important uh, for us uh, to vote pro-life, to strengthen our communities, thereby also strengthening our country, and thereby also giving glory to God for the life that he has given to each one of us. Okay, uh, anyone can answer this. With so many serious issues to consider, how can we justify single issue voting? Well, well I don't think, uh, certainly this is one issue, but I, I think it's, it's part of a bigger framework. If we are, let's just to rebuild our, our country, we need people to do that. And so if, this, if we look at this as a single issue, to rebuild our families, to rebuild our community. Uh, we, we need to take care of the most vulnerable among us, which is the unborn. And and the, the mothers that uh, and feel like they're in a situation to maybe think they need to abort their babies, we have to give them uh, more options uh, to be able to take care of their babies uh, and when they have them, knowing that they will have some additional support. So yeah, it may seem like a single issue, but I think it's, it's surrounded by more issues that, that, are, that we need to cover. And life is the beginning of all, of all of it. If you, have a, if you have a company, your single greatest, if you want, if we say product, or your single greatest uh, and most important part of your business are your people. And the most important part of our society are our people and it begins with those that are that are in the womb and so that's why i think it's i can justify being focused on this issue because it it reaches every other issue that we that affect us in our community yeah absolutely i definitely agree with donald um, you know, for me and i always say this um you know if you are not pro-life um when it comes down to voting um, then you know, I'm not going to hear much else um, from you. Um, but also, you know, just because you are pro-life doesn't mean I'm also going to uh, vote for you. Um, so for me, you know, it, it, it starts and ends with whether or not you value life in the womb. Um, I think it's a very dangerous mindset that we have um, allowed society um, to come to a point where um, we have, you know, you know, the people who are in different humans who are in different stages um, as invaluable. Um, and I think that, you know, it's up to um, people like you and, you know, the rest of us on this call and even those who may watch you um, to kind of get society back to that more framework of understanding um, that, you know, life uh, is, is, is valuable. Um, and so, you know, even when Roe v. Wade was passed, you know, a lot of people 
that, oh, you know, it's not going to be common. You know, we want it to be uh, rare. Um, and, you know, it was still kind of unheard of, heard of, excuse me, or bizarre to even get a, an abortion during those times. But, you know, millions upon millions and generations uh, later, here we are, um, where, you know, we are being questioned, um, we as in pro-lifers, are being questioned our character um, because we value life. So to me, you know, or to what Donald was saying, that, you know, it's not just about, it's not a single issue because this issue, um, you know, is just the, you know, kind of a premise to um, the rest of issue. We can't value any other issue if we're not, you know, um, first valuing life. What are some of the things at stake specifically if pro-abortion candidates should win in the upcoming election on the national, state, and local level? Uh, one of the things I believe is at stake is just our uh, liberty. If, if you, if we begin to kill, if I can use that word, our, our unborn children, uh, and, and that mindset perpetuates it through society, you can make any life that you value un, unvaluable. And so I, I think if if that is allowed to win, and we can look at it, just look at our nation uh, from when Roe v. Wade passed until now, I think we've aborted over 60 million babies. And certainly it's reflective in the populate, our age population of, of our, our society. And it's reflective in, I believe, in even our schools closing. We have a lot. I've said this even in the church that maybe some of our churches are empty because the people that would be in them never made it here because of abortion, which is affected the black community in a, a, a major way. And so if, if we're allowed to perpetuate that, there are already states like Virginia and New York that want to abort a baby up until uh, the day it is due. And even in Virginia, they're ab ab aborting babies after they are born. So it goes to infanticide at that point because you begin to not value life. And it's the, the most precious gift that we have. So if, if we don't win and we don't continue to fight for life, uh, we hurt ourselves as a nation. We hurt ourselves uh, in, individually as a, a family. We hurt ourselves as a, as a community. And, it, and as we have seen uh, from what Roe v. Wade and the arguments that were made for uh, aborting a baby or unwanted pregnancy to where we are today to infanticide, it only perpetuates and gets worse. It does not get better for uh, our community or for our country if we continue to abort our children. And it, um, it takes away our control. Um, so, you know, going back to the black communities, it's no secret um, that generally they are placed, abortion clinics are generally placed in um, neighborhoods where, you know, there's black and brown um, people. And so what you're finding is that this is another way where government is you can control our population because even looking at the history of population pop, excuse me abortion itself a lot of countries are using it specifically for um, population control um, and kind of getting rid of the quote unquote least desirable in society um, so that too is you know one of the main things that uh, it, 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 what we stand to lose if abortion candidates get in there um, is our right to, our real right to choose, um, you know, whether or not, uh, uh, you know, take, take control back of the, our family and uh, take control back of life. Yeah, Donald mentioned Roe versus Wade and really um, if Donald Trump is elected, president, there's a chance that Roe versus Wade could be overturned. Um, if he gets the chance to appoint some more pro-life justices on the highest court, um, that Roe versus Wade could fall. And then the decision um, could go back to the states. And in Michigan, 
we have very good pro-life law that's been in effect for a very long time and abortion will be illegal again here. So this election is very, very important. Uh, both of you mentioned in the beginning um, that you are, um, you're Christians and you believe in God. What if somebody cites the separation of church and state and tells you that you should keep your Christian views out of politics? How do you answer that? Oh, I think, go ahead, David, I'll, I'll go after him. Okay, no problem. Um, so, I mean, for me, and that goes back to, you know, earlier when we first started, um, as uh, as a believer in understanding who who's I am, um, and that is God's creation. Um, and so a lot of times we have made things that are biblical um, into something that is somehow seen now as political. Um, when you're looking at saving the lives of the unborn, uh, you know, there's several scriptures um, that uh, that credits that and confirms um, that life does begin at uh, conception. And even with the, you know, the church versus state, for one, um, I will explain that that's not in the Constitution anyway. Um, but, you know, to add, to try, a lot of times we try to make um, we try to make what society sees and try to make it into something that God, you know, what God condones or what, you know, God believes. Um, but there's a book called the Bible <laughs> and that Bible uh, gives us that instruction. Um, so again, you know, killing unborn, uh, murdering the unborn, it is not a political issue. It is indeed a biblical one. You know, I, I agree with David, and I, and I think that's a very good question um, because people will mention the separation of church and state. The first of all, the separation of church and state, when we understand how this country was uh, formed and how how it came to be when when our founding fathers were escaping English rule, they the Church of England uh, it was over the entire country and every citizen. So the separation of church and state actually remain, means that the government cannot establish a church to, that every citizen would have to join. And so that's one argument on the separation of church and state. Uh, secondly, um, when it comes to life, if, if we cannot argue it from a biblical standpoint, which sometimes we, we, we get into those places where they do not want to hear what God's word says. So sometimes we do need to bring up the science of life itself. And when we look at life itself, you have uh, 23 male uh, chromosomes and 23 females that come from the mother, 23 that come from the father. And so it's 46 that makes up human life. So as soon as life is conceived, they have those 46, that's a human being. Also, again, from a secular standpoint, um, the embryo has the four criteria that make up life, which is metabolism, growth, reaction to stimuli, and reproduction. So even if you take God out the equation or the Bible out the equation, even from a scientific standpoint, at conception, that actually is life in the womb. And I was uh, I read a book one time. It was called Less Than Human, Why We Mean, Enslave, and Exterminate Others. And it was written by uh, David Livington Smith. And it was really talking about the Holocaust and things that have happened in our past. Uh, for example, during the, the Jewish uh, Holocaust, they would refer to the Jews as rats. So they would make it less than human. And I think we've done the same thing with the baby in the womb. We try to refer to a human being as less than human, which gives people or which they think that gives them the ability or the right to be able to exterminate that human being. So I think if they're not willing to listen to listen to it from God's perspective, then we do need to bring up the secular argument or discussion on why this life is important and that, in fact, it is life at conception. And that's been proven scientifically. And if we can bring the, the, the argument or discussion back to a real life human being in the womb, we have a greater chance, I think, of winning their argument. But they've tried to dehumanize the the human being that's in the womb and, and it's made it easier for them to exterminate that life. So I, 
So when we cannot win the argument through a biblical lens, we, we should understand it from a scientific lens and, and still have the same discussion. And hopefully uh, we, we will be victorious in our, in our discussion. Yes, we all would have to have the discussion. We have to always be ready to support life. Joe Biden supports elective abortions at any point in pregnancy, fully supports using tax dollars to pay for abortions. He criticized the Supreme Court's ruling in Gonzalez versus Carhartt, which upheld the federal partial birth abortion ban. Donald Trump, on the other hand, has said we should not be one of seven countries that allows elective abortions after 20 weeks. It goes against our core values. How could our country have gotten to the point where the words partial birth and abortion you gotta get a together, much less to describe a procedure that presidential candidate Joe Biden is in favor? How could we have gotten here? I, I, I believe that I think it goes to your earlier question. Uh, if we allow the uh, pro-choice movement, the uh, allow a candidate that gets in that does not favor pro-life, it just escalates. It gets bigger and bigger. And, and again, putting on a, my pastoral hat, if, if we perpetuate uh, evil or sin, it grows. It, it doesn't get better it gets worse and, and, and we, we've gotten here because we dehumanized the, the human being in the womb and also I, I, I would I would argue to say that we've left left God out the equation God has to be a uh, part of our discussion God even our founding fathers you know uh, you, you said in the beginning we're all created by our creator with certain inalienable rights among them are life the first one is life and of course every in pursuit of happiness and they go that goes right to the beginning or to the creator of all life and because we have left him out of the equation and you can, and, and, and all these arguments that we have in our country about pro-choice god is always left out of the equation because when you bring god into the equation god is life god is the one that gives us life and i think we've got here because we we are a nation not unlike Germany and the Holocaust that has forgotten God. David, do you have something to say? You know, absolutely. Um, even when you, um, you know, go in, I, when you speak to people, um, they'll be, you'll, you'll be surprised how many people do not know um, what you just mentioned about Joe Biden um, and what you just mentioned about uh, what he said and what he believes about that law. And they'll and they'll look at me as if I'm a conspiracy theory and I'll tell them, I'm like, well, no, it's, it's actually in plain writing, um, it's documented, it's a verifiable fact. Um, so even th they can't even fathom that. Um, and that comes from a place from, you know, what pro-abortion candidates typically to do, excuse me, is desensitize people. And they do that by dehumanizing those who are in the room. So now um, you have a lot of people um, who, when you talk about the, um, the partial birth uh, and they'll, and they'll look at you like, well, no, that can't, that can't be true. But it's like, no, it's absolutely. And we as society allow that to happen and this is how we get there and that's the danger of allowing government to determine your worth um in your personhood and, and if i could add something to what david just mentioned and i think that's a big part of it is the educational piece of what uh the current since we're looking at joe biden and donald trump what do they actually stand for and and a lot of people aren't aware of some of these stance, stances that Joe Biden has made in the past. And because of that, they will not see the harm in voting for a candidate that, that will actually go against uh, the society in, in, in terms of abortion. And, and so I think that's extremely important that we educate the society as much as possible. Which is a which which is a, a uphill battle in and of itself for sure. Yeah, um, let me play devil's advocate here. Uh, what what about racism? What about um, 
immigration? What about things like that? What if I care about social justice issues that I feel maybe the pro-life candidate doesn't care so much about? I'll jump so, in. Uh, you, you, okay, go ahead, David. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I, uh, to one of the main factors I point out, um, well, for, first of all, one, I asked them, please point to a, um, an example of someone who claims to be pro-life um, that doesn't stand um, against evil, this just period. Um, God is a God of justice. Um, he believes in justice and he's against injustice. Um, so that covers all bases. So um, I always ask them, well, what in what case um, are you referring to where a pro-lifer didn't agree um, about the life of those that you just mentioned? Um, and then I go on and make it very clear um, that as of right now, uh, the lives, the lives in the womb are considered uh, you know, it's, it's, it's socially acceptable. Socially acceptable. Millions of millions of murders um, have taken place, um, and I always make it clear that yes, this is a priority of mine. Um, and in a couple of weeks ago, I was in a in a meeting, and a pastor made a very very good point, um, and he said. And, and he was in a room and he asked, you know, how many people, you know, came out of uh, racism um, and, and, you know, the, uh, those who are black well, rose their hands, you know, say, yep, I experienced race, racism and I also overcame it. Um, and then he asked how many have, who, excuse me, how many were able um, to come out of an abortion? Um, and he went on to say that, you know, the room became silent. Um, so that's always the, the point I try to come from um, is, you know, not that I don't care about other issues that may arise. Um, I may disagree on ways that we can fix um, immigration or fix racism. Um, but, you know, I don't disagree with the fact that you know, those lives matter, but at this point in time, it's socially ex acceptable and it's legal now to the point um, where people are pushing up until birth. Um, and so that's the, that's always the point I try to convey when speaking on those things. Donald? I agree with David. And when it comes to illegal immigration, and that's just, one is illegal immigration, when you look at it in the totality and you look at the, the studies that have been done, it actually hurts the black community far more than any other community because it, it, it begins to take the jobs and it lowers wages. So we're not against immigration. It's illegal immigration that, could, that has posed to be a problem uh, in, our, in our community. Second, when it comes to social justice, uh, social justice is important. God is a God of justice. And so let's look at uh, if we just, I'm just use one of the social justice uh, arguments, which is uh, the feminism. So let's just say we're, we're fighting for the, the female rights. Well, what about the female baby in, in the womb? Does she not deserve social justice too? Does she not deserve her life like any other female deserves their lives and to be treated well and uh, equally in society? So if, we, if we're going to have social justice and just that one criteria, and the, or if we look uh, at the if we're, if we're talking about the African American race, does not that African American baby that's in the room do they not deserve uh, the same social justice and the right to, to have the life that God has given them as the person that is trying to terminate their life? So I think when we look at you know justice, we got to look at it holistically uh, from the womb as well, and we're denying that person one their life, which by definition, we're, we're denying them their uh, the argument of social justice. So if we're going to have those arguments, certainly the baby that is in the womb deser deserves the same justice as the, the us that are, that are outside of the womb. So that, that would be uh, part of my discussion on that. Justice has to be holistic, holistically and not just picked and choose here and there on what we want. We should We should have social justice for every human being or 
or better put, just justice for every human being. That is, that's so true. And if you think about it, the right to life is the only right that, if taken away, can never be recovered. It can never be given back. That's it. That is Absolutely. the end. Absolutely. All right. Um, during his time in the Michigan legislature, Gary Peters voted against any restriction on abortion and was a leading advocate for physician-assisted suicide. John James, on the other hand, says that life begins at conception and ends at natural death. What happened to safe, legal, and rare? Gary Peters wants to take away all restrictions, even safety practices. Is there any way a pro-abortion candidate can serve you in the Senate if he believes your life to be absolutely worthless? I don't think so. I, I think, and this, this has been an argument I've, I've had over the years, I, if we don't think the life in the womb is valuable, or if a candidate or someone is representing us sooner or later, if we're in the way, they won't think our life is valuable either. Is if 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 any life is unvaluable, it's not valuable to them. Then no life is valuable to them. And so I think that's a, a, a bad recipe. And we've already seen it escalate um, to the infanticide. And Gary Peters has also voted in favor of legislation on infanticide as well. And that's that's actually a baby that's already born, that's alive and kicking and screaming and all the things that babies do, that, that babies do. And he's actually voted in, in favor of that. As you just mentioned, is he's voted for no restrictions on, on abortion. Even if uh, a baby is born and it was the, the mother's desire to uh, abort the baby, he's in favor of of uh, terminating that baby's life as well. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, you know, that answer is easy for me. Um, absolutely not. Um, and you see a lot of these, uh, you know, pro-abortion candidates, um, especially at the federal level, um, where, you know, they have so many inconsistencies, even with the lives that are born that they claim um, to care so much about. I um, mean, you look in some of these, you know, communities, um, you know, especially um, commun uh, uh, communities with a lot of, um, you know, black and brown people where they live and you see the, 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 the how they're living and you see the conditions that they're living in um, and they're represented in these areas, but so for some reason um, they, you know, claim that we don't care about those lives um, but you know you can't you don't care about the lives that you know you say oh you know they're born okay well what are you doing to fix those lives so um, you can see those who are poor abortion and doesn't value life at conception you can see um, that they have uh, inconsistencies in caring about any life um, and just caring mostly about power the bible says you know a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and what we're seeing now is the manifestation of that instability from all these decades that's true um and we were just talking about uh gary peters and and what he believes um I think some politicians have embraced radical pro-abortion extremism it's not like there's any way to cover that up. Do you have any idea why they've chosen to go that far? Mm, that's a that's a very good question. I, I think at some level they believe that's what society may be uh, asking for. I, that that's a very good question because they they've been successful up until this point. And so a part of it is uh, when a person is successful at, at one level, they begin to push harder uh, for what they're really shooting for. And so I'm over, just coming from my pastoral hat. Satan never comes and says, here are my horns, and I'm, I'm here to destroy you or get you. He starts very slowly, like he did with Eve in the garden, and he perpetuates his, his true desires. And I think at this point, I, kn I know we, we, we don't often talk about or sin and uh, the spirit of sin, but 
when when we talk about it, politicians seeing too. They make uh, they they seeing and they make decisions that are sinful that a God is not pleased with. And even in Romans 13, he expects our political leaders to uh, to, to be uh, moral in their decision making. And I believe because we have again going back to an earlier statement, taking God out the equation, they're just pushing more and more of the agenda to uh, limit the amount of people that are on this earth. And part of that process is uh, abortion. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's two things. You know, one, as mentioned earlier, with the sensitive, um, desensitize, excuse me, uh, desensitizing, um, you know, the value of life. Because again, you know, when Bobby Ray was passed, it, it, safe and rare. Uh, and, you know, so it was unheard of and you were, you were still, you know, looked down upon um, if you had an abortion. Um, and now we are here. So I think that's one of the reasons, the number two, and I think because there's money to be had, um, to be made, excuse me, um, regarding that, um, you know, through places like Planned Parenthood, which that name in itself is, it's ironic, but um, but yeah, so that's what I think those the two main things is why we are here today um, is because of the desensitization of it and um, because of the money that a lot of politicians make um, off of that as well. So we know that we're kind of preaching to the choir here on this RLM Black Leadership Committee Facebook page live stream. But say somebody's scrolling by and they are pro-choice. They think, you know, should be an individual's right to choose that. If you had just a quick few minutes to convince that person that, that this issue matters to their life, it matters and it's important to defend the unborn, what would you say? Uh, that's a that's a good question. Um, my response in the past has been that every every life is valuable, including the, the person that I'm talking to. And God formed them, God made them, and God has formed the baby that's currently in the womb. And pro-choice should should be a, have you, it should not be what. I, I call it a Hobson's choice where you only get one choice. Pro-choice is one choice. We should, we should give uh, mothers with unplanned pregnancies other options or more choices besides abortion. I, I think because what we're saying when we say pro-choice right now is we're, we're saying we're pro-abortion. When if we're saying pro-choice and we want to give mothers more choices and, and uh, ability to do something besides an abortion, with their baby, that's that's the argument. I would say, well, let's give them more choices. Let's not make abortion the choice, the only choice that they have. Very good, David. What what about you? What would you say? Um, for me, what I typically keep them across um, those conversations. I know Donald mentioned it earlier, um, but it's important to talk about the science um, because a lot of time, you know, um, because God has been removed conversation um, is not coming from that point and they won't receive it well. Um, so I come from a scientific standpoint uh, regarding life. Um, and then I also, um, this is also kind of similar to Donald, but, you know, discussing, you know, the many options that are out there. Um, you know, there are a lot of organizations, a lot of resources um, that there are to offer uh, women. So, you know, a lot of times when I go, uh, people will say, oh, well, you know, you're a man and you don't have a right um, to speak on the life. And then, but, you know, it's easy to destroy that premise because a lot of the leaders in the pro-life movement are women and they get the same uh, treatment. So, you know, a lot of times people are set in their ways. Um, but, you know, I believe that, you know, sowing seeds. Um, so it's always hard because you never know the place that people are coming from, why they're um, pro-choice. Um, but a lot of times it is pretty much because they allowed, um, you know, society to kind of feed into them and kind of brainwash them into thinking that. Um, so that's why, you know, 
I typically try to uh, come at it from a scientific uh, premise because, you know, God is also a uh, science. So, um, you know, uh, the two aren't necessarily um, exclusive, but um, so that's typically the way that I address it, um, given those premises. You both mentioned choices, giving a woman choices and resources. And um, I just want to point out that Right to Life of Michigan has so many resources on our website, rtl.org. Uh, you can find pregnancy resource centers. You can find um, counseling. You can find adoption, just about anything, even post-abortion counseling. Um, and Right to Life of Michigan also has a website called Help in the D. And that offers help with other things besides just the pregnancy and the early childhood. It's like medical resources, housing, all kinds of resources that um, someone might need to know about in order to make the decision for life. So um, go to rtl.org. You can also find there a personalized pro-life ballot generator. And um, you just put in a little bit of information and you'll get all of the endorsed candidates that will be on your ballot. So you really don't even have to do the work um, to find out who is pro-life. You can just bring that with you and vote for those. So I want to thank you guys so much for coming on tonight. I, we really appreciate your witness. We appreciate your knowledge and you standing up for life. Thank you both so much. Well, thank you so much for inviting uh, me and uh, giving me the opportunity to, to be a part of this forum. Uh, I truly appreciate it. And I appreciate the work that you're doing and what you just mentioned, all the, the, the options that, that ladies have. Uh, I'm so glad that you're here to, to give more choices to, to ladies other than aborting their baby and bringing that baby into life and giving them a chance to th thrive and grow uh, in this, this great country that we have. Thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. Thank you Thank so you. much for having, having me. I always um, enjoy the discussion. So thank you again. Thank you, David. And next Tuesday, August 18th, we're going to be doing a live stream here on this Facebook page on the social impact of abortion on African American communities with Tony McFadden and Missy Parker Miller. So hope you can join us. Thanks again. Thank Have a good you. night.